Welcome to Ron's 217 Garage. Shop today. Uh, I've got the daughter's uh, Ford Explorer 2016 up on the rack. Just doing an oil change. Uh, nothing too exciting. Looking at it. See, she's got a little oil leak here around the, uh, the differential. I'll be looking into that, see what's going on. I'm going to do an oil filter change on this. Uh, draining the oil out right now. Uh, in fact, we're just about done draining the oil. Yeah, a couple of them are running there. And then uh, I'm going to look at some other things. Going to pull the wheels, check the brakes for and that kind of stuff. So... Nothing real exciting going on today, uh, uh, except for this damn stick ain't worth a shit. How's that? There. There we go. My uh, little phony dony stick here. <laughs> selfie stick is more selfie than stick. So anyhow, uh, that's what's going on. Uh, I started to uh, film a review on... A pump to transfer oil from here to buckets where I can take it to a friend of mine's house that's got an oil burner. I have an oil burner, but I don't have it up and running at the moment, so I have more oil than I can get used. So, anyhow, I started to do a review on a transfer pump that that I bought, and uh, I'll show you the box. Bought I bought it off of Amazon. Uh, So, here's the box. This is what it is. Oil extractor pump. Uh, I can tell you right now, it was $22. And uh, that's $22, which I wish I never would have spent. I'm going to use it for, for a different purpose than what I had originally bought it for. I bought it for the purpose to, like I said, transfer the oil out of that, which is 16 gallon into these so I can dispose of them but <clears throat> nowhere nowhere does it say uh, it says efficiently removes up to three quarts per minute yeah right not even on a good day maybe three quarts per hour uh, nowhere does it tell you that hey guess what you can't really use it for that that's made to stick that tube down in the motor when the engine oil is hot 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 and pump it out uh, it's not made, just pump it out of here into here when the oil is, is cool or cold because it will not pump. That pumps, but just barely. So uh, anyhow, that was a $22 idea that didn't work. Uh, I am going to be building a scavenger pump. Uh, I've seen it done before, and I've got some ideas on how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it a little different in the way they did it. I am going to be building a scavenger pump, and I'm going to use a... Uh, which will be a, a video coming up as soon as the pump comes in. Uh, I'm purchasing a, uh, a uh, oil pump off for a small block Chevy. And I'm uh, going to hook it up so it runs off a drill. And I'm actually going to mount it right to this unit so it's always on that unit. And when I get done draining the oil, I can just, you know, drain the oil into that unit. After it gets full, I can just dump it into three, three of those barrels. And uh, that'll do the trick. Uh, Right now, you can see the level where the level is on there. It's two-thirds full. Uh, you can see the line right there. So uh, I'll be getting that in, getting that going, because i got to empty this thing out. So uh, I'll get that done. I'll do a video on building that pump and that. And, that, and uh, I'm starting on the wood for... for to put that, take that off of that, uh, uh, used to be an old vanity, take it off that vanity and uh, make a permanent mount for it. Uh, I don't have the wheel adapters for that originally. That's a Harbor Freight Special, in which, uh, long story, but when I worked as a machine repairman, that fit onto a huge workbench assembly. And uh, so I didn't need the wheels off of it. But anyhow, uh, uh, we'll be getting all that up and running. Uh, so it looks like my oil is about done. So I'm going to wipe that up and then I'm going to change the filter. 
Uh, that'll be the next thing I do. Okay, the oil filter on this thing is pretty easy to get to. It's a V6, like I said, it's a Ford 2016 Explorer. It's pretty easy to get to, so I will use my filter wrench and, and I will get it off. Now, I gotta tell you, I own two or three different filter wrenches, and the best filter wrench I've ever had, one I bought, oh, probably 30 years ago, and it is this assembly. And this fits every size filter there is. Uh, this top comes off. This, this. We'll try to hold this at the same time. This assembly comes off, and it goes into here. And anyhow, there's six different filter sizes this thing fits. It gets into just about everywhere. As you can see, it won't quite fit into there, so I'll have to change the adapter, which I was telling you about. Uh, see if I can do this here. I can set this up someplace where, where you can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, this is a filter thing here. This, uh, the center comes out of it. Like this. Alright. That, that's for a size filter. Which I don't think is this one. It is not. But I think this one right here, on the inside of this, is a filter. Is the one that I use on this. Oh yeah, look at there. Turn this around so you can see what I'm doing, maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Well, I guess you can't from that angle. Let me see if I can get it over here. At this angle. Oh. How's that? Have I disturbed everything here? Here. You can see that that fits on there like that. Then this that was on on the top fits inside on this side uh, on this like this and it allows for me to use it as a as a wrench to take it off to loosen the filter. Just like that, the filter is loose. And that's the little best that's the best little filter wrench I've ever I've had. Uh, I've got others. Uh, so uh, I can get, get into any spot. It's not a big deal. Uh, so anyhow, that filter is now ready to come off. And uh, go in the biz bag, as I call them. Drain that out a little bit. Draining that out, draining it into the funnel. Get that all done, we're ready to go. Get me a, get me a, a new roll of Scott's uh, Towel's ready. For this mess. Getting my ass kicked here by a, a paper thing. Cut. Okay. So I'll put this in the holder on my rack. It's a Harbor Freight holder. I'll show that to you here in a minute. I really like it. It really, really does the job. Okay, so tear off a paper, couple of paper towels. Get the new filter out. I'll grab an oil can quick so I can oil the filter. Oh, 
Well, the gasket on the filter, you know what I mean. These have changed this stuff before. Okay, take this, get this out. And there it goes. That's the filter. Get that down out of the way. Wipe all this off up here with these Scotch towels. Scott towels. Roll this out of the way. I said it's about full. Wipe that good for, for where the filter goes. Take and we put just a just a little bit of oil on it. And then we rub that oil around the gasket. Like so. We spin the filter on. Do not force the filter on. I had one the other day in which uh, young man cross for threaded the filter. Wanted me to fix it. So they brought it to me. And the filter was had was only on there about a round and a half. Now you just see me turn this thing here on here about three rounds. Okay. It contacts right there. I can see the label. Now I want to turn it a half to three quarter or three quarters of one full turn after that. After it contacts. There's half. There's about seven eighths, so that should seal it real good. I should take care of that really nice. So we're ready to let her down and put the oil in it. But before that, I do that. Before I do that. I'm going to pull a tire and check the brakes for it, check the brake pads. Now, to do that, I'm going to swing this here around here like this. On this lift, get all this stuff back, I have an air over hydraulic to lift it up. It's a, it's a, it's a four post lift drive one, but this, this thing is amazing. Number one, it, it rolls with these. Okay, so I will roll it back here, get it ready, and lift. Let's see, where do I want to lift that? Just lift right there on the arm, on the, on the lower control arm, right there where it meets the, right there. Okay, now. I need to hook up an air hose. Again, I'm going to use this and lift, lift that with this. Oops. Got a little room here. Yep. All right, while I was readjusting this, I bumped it so you didn't get to see it go up. Anyhow, I put it up, put the air hose on, took it up. I'll show you how it all works there in a minute. There's a lock, a safety lock. I, and then after I got it up off the ground, I let it down onto the safety lock. So that would do that. Would do that. Uh, I will still hooked up. I will show you how, how the unit works again. I can take it up into the air for more. You can hear the compressor in the background. That's what that humming noise is. There's air compressor. So anyhow, I hook the air line into this unit. I push on this pedal. And it raises the unit up in the air. I do have it on the lock. So I'll let it back down onto the lock. So the locks are safe. And push on this, this side of the pedal. There it is. It's on the lock. So this is all nice and steady. 
take some of the, the pressure in case something happens. That it, it, no, another little safety, but I'll show you how all that works again. Uh, right now I'm going to, uh, because it's on the lock, I can just connect the air hose. Okay, I'm going to re Shoot, I hit the off button again. Ah. Anyhow, uh, I just disconnected the air hose. I didn't move. I'm going to now reconnect the air hose to my to my uh, unit. Got a lubricator, so it, so it lubricates the the main cylinder and my and my safety cylinders. I'm going to take it take it and let the unit down so that I can pull that wheel. Now to do that, you have to you have to take it up in the air. So it comes off the locks a little bit. I'll do that. Compressor's still running in the background. I'm sorry for that noise. That'll stop shortly. My, my green lights are on up there in the front. There it goes. It stopped. All right. So I will take it up. About that far. Comes off the locks. I hit, hit this little button here. That activates four cylinders on the locks. Let the lock, and I can let her down. Watch all four corners. It goes down a lot faster than it goes up. And I'll bring it to where I can take one of these wheels off and look at the brakes. There we go. So I will be taking one of these wheels off and taking a look at, look at the brakes. Let me get set up and we'll do that. Okay, I'll take these lugs off with my impact. I can get this wheel off now and we can take a look at the brakes. Just want to inspect them. They're not metal to metal or anything, but but I just want to see what they look like. So I will pull this off. And uh, we'll take one look at them. Wheel is quite heavy, so I will roll it up here. Alright, let's take a look at let's see what we got in the way of brakes, shall we? I'm not seeing very good is what I'm not seeing. Ah, oh, there we go. Focus. So, let me get a light here. Broke my light the other day. That torqued me off, so I gotta order a new one. But it still works. This is the housing of it's going. Okay. We can see down in there. I can get her positioned. Just right. There you can't. There we go. There we go. There. You can see the pad. Yeah, about half the pad, a little more than half. We're in good shape there. That all looks good. Uh, so we will. That's one hell of a hard one to get to. Usually you can look at them from the top. Uh, usually. Well, Ford's Ford. But usually. There'll be a little hole right here. And look right in that hole and see how they are. Just like right here on this side, you can see. Uh, how they are. Add some light, you'll be able to see real good. But uh, 
I can see that they are about halfway. They look good. Everything looks good. Uh, looking for any, any play. I don't see any any play there. That all looks good. So I'll put this back on, tell her that they look good, and uh, we'll go from there. And then I'll finish up with the oil change. Okay, I put the wheel back on. Uh, I started these, always started by hand, always. Always started by hand, three or four threads before you use an impact gun. And then I, I tighten them in a star pattern. Then I went to another one and started it and, and hit them again in the star pattern. And I always do it three times. Then I went to another one and started in a star pattern. And always checking them. So everything everything looks good. I will let this down and finish on with the uh, with the oil change. And we'll get this done. Okay, we're going to let this rolling jack down. I told you I'd show you how it works so you can see it better. And uh, so you can see how exactly how it works. Uh, see if I can't get set up here a little better with my camera. So you can, you can get an idea better how it works. Okay. All right, here's how it works. Put the airline in such, excuse me, put the airline in. You hit this, it jacks it up. Get it off of the lock, which is over here. Pull the lock up. Push on this and then let it let it down. These things here off. Well, may have to roll it back out of the way just a little bit. Pull this up. Take it off. Take the extension off. Also, this slides in and out on both sides. That is a, a another feature. Like I say, we we'll do both sides the same. Nice part about this jack is is that. It goes completely out of the way. Once it's down, what it does is it, it lifts. Uh, what it does is it it lifts up on these springs. These are these wheels are on springs, so when you put pressure, it comes down and rests on this. Whoops, excuse me. Comes down, it rests on this, lifts, and then the jack's got something. It's, it's actually supported by this, but when you take the weight off. The jack comes up and goes on the wheels, and that way uh, uh, you can uh, you can roll it out of the way. Oops! That way you can roll it out of the way. I'll show you. Just by pushing it with my hand. So I'm going to continue to look at the rest of this vehicle, see if there's any gear joints or or constant velocity joints that need changed. I don't like that. Let's see. A little bit of flux right there. And a little bit of flux. Might need a carrier bearing replaced. This carrier bearing might need replaced. I'll have to look at that. And, uh, but, uh, everything else seems, seems a little tight. 
everything. Check this side here. Like I checked the other side. That's tight. It all looks good underneath here. So with that, I will uh, I will let it down. I will uh, I will push this uh, this jack back up into place. I always keep it the nose. I always this is where I store it up against that, and we're in good shape. Uh, and uh, I'll let the vehicle down and put the oil in. All right. Again, connect up to the to the uh, there. Have to let the air off. I will have to take it up off the locks first. About that far. Take the locks off. Let it down. We'll let it all the way down. Actually, we'll stop it right there. I'm going to show you something here. We'll pull this little cover back. Okay. And right in there, you see a little air cylinder. Oops, let me put this one where you can see it here. Take that cover off. Right there, a little air cylinder. Now when I hit that air button, what that does, pushes the locks out of place. Now this also has a safety lock. Those are locks which you let it down on, but it has a cable lock, which is... You can't really see it. Anyhow, there's a cable lock uh, in there. Right there. See that wheel right here? This wheel? When that, if that cable breaks, that wheel comes loose and another set of locks joins into the holes on the way down to keep it from hitting the ground and to stop it. So it's a double lock system. It's a bin pack. It's a 9,000 pound and very, very durable. And again, 9,000 pound up to 9,000 pound, including 9,000 pound, excuse me, uh, bin pack, four post. You do not have to mount them to the floor. It just sits here. I can move this. I have a wheel kit, which they're up on top of that cabinet there. There, is, there they are. Have a wheel kit which just goes on this and allows me to to lower it down and it picks the post up and I can move this anywhere in the shop I want again 9,000 pound bim bim pack I swear by them uh, a lot of people use them yeah they're a little more expensive like usually it's less than seven hundred dollars more than, than the other one or eight hundred but is your life worth that I think it is it is certified it is one of the few lifts that is certified. So I, I really like bin pack and uh, it's, it, it's a, great, uh, a great lift. I have a lot of fun with it. And uh, so anyhow, I will continue to lower this, take the locks off, let her down. And if you notice, it goes, comes down a hell of a lot faster than it goes up. I'm in the process of of piping air into this uh, permanently to where I do not have to use an air hose. Uh, we've been working on that. There's the airline right there. We're running down alongside that and coming from over in the corner where the air compressors are. And I got it to there and I'll tee it off and bring it over and then bring just a short hose down into this and then go up and go to the other end of the garage with it. And also the hose I bring down to this, I'll, I'll tee it off and put a put a section of uh, of steel pipe inside. I put a section of steel pipe inside one of these uh, one of these runners, and uh, uh, we'll we'll be able to uh, take care from that for the lift, so I don't have hoses all over. Okay, I had a phone call. I had to I had to 
interrupt my uh, my share with your phone call. Okay, so I'm going to put oil in this uh, 5W20. That's what it uses. Uh, I'm going to put uh, take six quart with a filter, not like everything does anymore. Uh, so that's what I'm going to put in here, and uh, that will finish this up. And when after I get that in, I'll turn the camera back on, and then I got some other stuff to show real quick, and uh, we'll get that going. All right, it's cleanup time. So I'm just going to start cleaning this up from the oil change. I got several things to put away, and I'll get all this cleaned up. Uh, and so just some some tips or, or on on some small tools that uh, and ideas. I bought this moldy tip, a kind of a uh, kind. Of, I don't know, maybe it'll, I I thought it was a joke, but let me tell you what, I use this for. 99.9% .9 all my oil changes. Uh, it does work. It's just a cheap moldy wrench, uh, size 12 through 19 millimeter, uh, and uh, does have a magnet on the side. So, so if you wanted to, you could clip it to the to the side of whatever. Um, uh, it, it is very very handle ha handy. Uh, can't, can't tell you, I, I kind of bought it as a joke. Wasn't much money, I bought it, but you know what? It was worth every penny I spent on it. You know, it's, it's one of them things where, where, you, uh, where, where you're not sure, you know, yeah, okay, but it's only so much money, so I'll go ahead and buy that and see, see how that turns out. So anyhow, I did, and uh, uh, pretty good investment. So next thing is a paper towel holder, and I bought a paper towel holder. And this is uh, uh, U.S. General, and uh, it's from Harbor Freight. It's a two-piece, and it's it's magnetic. The nice part about it is you can put it on it like if you have a car lift, like I do. You can put it right on the car lift, set it there like that. Take the top one. It's magnetic. Push it down in a hole. Now you got paper towels. In that position and it works it works very well uh, I usually keep uh, uh, one set down here on the front plate on my on my bin pack uh, and uh, it works pretty good oops see if I can do this one-handed Andy's good at this I'm not so good at it but <laughs> what can I say so anyhow uh, you slide the paper paper thing on. You got a second one, which fell on the ground. <laughs> Evidently, I'm not as good as you, Andy. So, all right, we'll try this again. A little more uh, helpful this time. How's that? Okay, so slide it in there. You slide this in there. You slide that over. Now you got a paper towel holder on the end of your lift. Can't say how, how I bought that. I, I actually bought two of them. There's one here. There's one on the back of that post back there. Great idea. Uh, you don't have to drain holes are drilled. It, it, it works great. And I think it was only nine, ten dollars somewhere around there. Great little cheap little tool. So, again, I'm 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 all about cheap little tools. Uh, can holder again. Another uh, another U.S. General product. You can put this on your toolbox. I've got this on my post. I put my my brake cleaners here when I'm doing brakes. Put my those cans right there, and that way I know where they are. Works fantastic. So another great little, great little cheap tool. I mean, you know, it's just little ideas. Now I want to do want to tell you that uh, I did start to do. There goes the air compressor again. Uh, I think I'm going to walk back and turn that thing off. I don't need it. I'm done with the air for the day. So we'll take a hike. There's two of them back here in the corner, and I have uh, I have this uh, set up for my air compressors. I got two of them, uh, low pressure and a high pressure. Uh, they feed in, they go into series, over in, and then feed up uh, through. Uh, that steel line going there, uh, which uh, it's not completed yet. But the idea of the light is, is that when I go out, when I leave for the night, 
I'll open the door and look up and see if I left my air compressors on. I mean, because because uh, nice, nice, great big green light, you can see it. So that's kind of an idea I put into it. Uh, so anyhow, yeah, air compressors off. I'll head back this way. Uh, yeah, I do have a big screen TV up on the wall. Flashed it when there was no advertisement on, so you could see it. I'm making a drill station here. Uh, uh, got my two drill presses and and sanders and stuff, and that'll be full of drill drill bits. I've got several box indexes uh, with extra bits. Uh, this one is fractional. I got decimal, and I also have uh, number drills too. Uh, so I'll be showing you all that. I just got to get all this organized again. If you followed my first video. I brought all this stuff home from work uh, while well, I was a machine repairman for uh, uh, 50 years at two large corporations, and so I had it all. So, Okay, well, uh, it's cleanup time. Oh, I know what I was telling you. Uh, this pump. I have this pump. I bought this pump. Uh, I started to do a, uh, a video on it. I showed you earlier. And uh, the reason this video doesn't exist is, number one, the pump is junk. But number two, as I'm filming the stupid thing, I drop my phone in there. Yeah, well, scratch one Ultra 22S. So anyhow, uh, start, I had to start over, so I decided I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to build a new one out of a, uh, like I said, a small block Chevy oil pump, and uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. So until the next time, be safe. Please like and subscribe and hope to see you around the corner. Thank you. And to put an end to this project, I uh, just want to say one thing. Thanks again for viewing it. And uh, if you get a chance, go to my buddy's channel. Andy's Garage. Andy does all kinds of things. He is just, just he has, tremendous. Has over a thousand videos up and running. And uh, just go watch Andy. You'll get a big kick out of him. He knows his stuff and he's and he and he adds a little humor to it too. So so again, subscribe and like and follow Andy on Andy's Garage. Have a safe day.